Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a Trust Me Gun Monday. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. Greg Warren, stand-up comedian with a very funny stand-up special called The Salesman, which is out. You can see the full episode. I'll call it an episode. A full special on YouTube. Nate Bargatze directed. Uh, good to see you. Hey, yeah. Thanks for having me in, man. Yeah, it was a very funny special because it was clean and... You talked a lot about peanut butter, <laughs> which I have a lot of thoughts on. So I, I want to hear them, man. I'm, I'm I mean, glad I, yeah. we, can, we can share. Yeah, it's a, kind of a controversial topic, but I, you know, I, I want to hear what you have to say about it. You know, I, and I like uh, the nuance. I loved all the uh, Pringle take. <laughs> right. I mean, you'll put on five pounds watching this special. <laughs> Made me hungry. There's some <laughs> good stuff in there. Too. Yeah, yeah. I will say it, this special is so good. It's probably my favorite special I've seen in a long time. Definitely all year. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, Thanks, so man. everybody, please go and watch it. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's really, it's really funny. And because in the... Comedy world, there's kind of the low hanging fruit of, of of jokes, and that's an easy enough way to go. And for me, it's like when there's the female comedian is in her forties, like, can we talk about dating, ladies? And it always kind of feels kind of crutchy, or the fat comedian talking about going to the buffet or whatever it is. But to do forty six minutes on peanut butter, <laughs> that that's a challenge. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh... It's something I feel pretty strongly about, man. I sold peanut butter for for several years. You know, I have a lot of thoughts as well. Do you? Yeah, I'm, I'd kind of like to hear it, man. I mean, are you? What's your brand? Are you? Well, okay. So I grew up with a hippie health food mom. Okay, and, and it's not on you, but no, but I had no control over what was coming sure. into the house. Yeah, yeah. And I got the old school, just peanuts and salt mashed up with this slick of oil at the top. Yeah. And you got to stir it, but there's no good way to stir it no. because the knife goes all the way in. And yeah. now the knife, now the peanut butter is all the way up the handle of the knife. I would find this much more. And then they give you hints, like turn it upside down, put it upside down. Yeah. And then when you put it upside down, then the oil will go to the bottom. And then you turn the top. The top's all aggregate now. Meanwhile, it's just you're, pieces you're, of peanut. You're manufacturing their product right there. Like right. you're labor, you're child labor for these guys. At this yes, point, I'm man. involved with the process yeah. of making peanut butter de facto because I'm now stirring it yeah. and storing it and turning it upside down. And don't put it in the refrigerator; it'll get all hard. Nah. And they're charging you more for it. Yes, they're charging a premium for it. Yeah, and then if you the the stuff where you they you grind it in the store. I mean, come on. I would be much more apt to sign off on the Laura Scudder's brand of just peanut. Hold on. I would be much more apt to do it if at the counter or at the store where they sold the peanut butter, they had the same thing they have at the Home Depot, the paint can shaker. <laughs> you, just, you put that back, clamp it up. It would work. And I'll tell you why it would work. Because a paint can shaker, they got a five-gallon version with the big bucket, yeah. you know, the big yeah. swirly one. Sure. They got the one-gallon up-and-down one. And the one-gallon one, I think, will work on a quart can. And last I checked... I haven't thrown a tape on it in a while, but yeah. the thing of the Laura Scudders is about the same as a quart of paint. So if you could do a paint can shaker with a quart in it, then you could do my Laura Scudders. I'm not saying reinvent the wheel. I'm saying go get a paint can shaker. Actually get the paint put can Put it there. Shaker. I would watch. I would be amused. And I think the product would be a lot better when it came out the other side. I mean, I think, you know, I, I say brand it. Put your name on this thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh -huh. uh, it's what they call entertainment. It's, you know, it's in yes. store, you know, like making an experience. Oh, the best Put part the, of my childhood was going to the Gelson's and watching the contraption that made the fresh orange juice. The oranges oh, the would like roll oranges, down the yeah. bell. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't afford it. But I could watch it. Right, right. You know what I mean? And they'd cut it and it'd squeeze and the thing. It was like, it was entertainment. Yeah. I mean, uh, you put, call it the Corolla, whatever you want to do. I think you got something there. What has, can I be the first American to think of this? I mean, is there something on YouTube of a traditional, we'll call it, the non-stabilized version of peanut butter. The, well, I mean, the stuff I was you're in the talking business. about is creamy all the time. Well, I, I was in the business. Well, then let's Adam. talk. So yeah, I mean, I you know, <laughs> you're, you're, I know these things. I was right. in ten, ten years selling peanut butter. 
Yeah, I think you're. I've never heard anything about I paint would, can. I would argue that peanut butter sells itself. I don't want to diminish what you did. I, okay, he's out of here. Wow, I'm not. I'm not trying to diminish no, you your role. You are, man. Oh, I think. You, I, I, I think you are, man. You, no one needs this to is, push me. This, this is the same thing my dad did, man. Oh, sorry, this is. You, man. you know, you're not really in sales. It's not about. It's not about. Uh, do they carry Jif as a brand? It's mm-hmm. about how much Jif did you sell last year, uh-huh. and how much you're going to sell next year. Mm-hmm. And you, you try going up against Skippy. Okay. Yeah. It, these guys. It's relentless. Yeah, Peter man. Pan, these Skippy. guys. They're sneaky. They're yeah. they're sneaky. Uh, unprincipled in some ways. And all you have is a small but vocal army of choosy mothers. Yeah. Choosy yeah. mothers. Choose Jeff. That's right. Not all mothers. Not all mothers. So your your pool's limited. Yeah. In yeah. terms of sales. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I'm an optimist. Um, sure. You know, I like to see the best in people, and I, I, I think. Most mothers are choosy, mm-hmm. I, I would have to say. Yeah. 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 You want them to be choosy. You want them to be choosy. You know, yeah. like I said, that you know, if you wish if, my mom was choosy. Your she mother choosy. actually was extremely choosy, I think, uh, <sighs> in that she, she was a little too can, choosy. Can I, can I tell you, there is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that is the best, can be the best. I mean, there, there is uh, Ben Dawson. Somebody, there is a multiple pages in maybe my first book, 50 Years Will Be Chicks, that discusses the peanut butter and jelly sandwich and, and, and how it's the only sandwich that gets better as the day wears on. Yeah. That's why it's the best lunch sandwich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because egg salad fucking no. takes a nosedive 15 minutes 15, after it's spread onto yeah. the thing. If there's it sun involved. Oh, yeah, yeah. so what you have to, there's maybe botulism involved yeah. if there's sun involved. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. the all the great sandwiches you think you love take a header <laughs> after about 15 <laughs> minutes, much less a 40 minute bus ride to school yeah, yeah, yeah. and then into the locker. The locker? You show up at school 7.45 in the morning, you're not busting the sandwich out no. until 12.30. Yeah, these kids That's got That's a some... tall sandwich order. You go find me your favorite hoagie or grinder. You go find, and I'll say, give it to me. I'll let it sit in a dark place for six hours. Yeah, yeah. Then tell me how much That's you the love true the sandwich. Measure. That's another That's good idea measure. you got there. But the peanut butter gets better because it does. the oil emulsifies with the bread. Yeah. And the, the goo from the jelly mixes with the peanut butter. Hey, here's where we're going to diverge a little bit. I'm with you. Okay. I, I like what you're saying. I'm a purist, okay? Mm-hmm. I don't think the sandwich needs jelly. Yeah. Mm. I think I just, just give me, give me a, give me a, uh, just peanut butter. Oh, wow. Like a good Jif creamy, crunchy mm-hmm. every now and then. And something, uh, a bread that'll stand up to it, like a Dave's Killer bread, something oh, like that. Oh, Dave's know, Killer. Yeah, 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 yeah. A good a good sandwich. I don't think it needs you. I'm not saying you can't have I'm jelly. Not, I'm not talking about you and I as adults. I'm saying there's choosy mothers who choose yeah. Jeff, and then there's choosy kids who want their fucking jelly. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> it's the choosy eight-year-olds who need that sweetness of the jelly. But let me, yeah, let me just paint the soft. picture. They're, they're coming up soft. Um, the... the Oh, we have my sandwich? <laughs> what book is that from? 50 years. Just so you know, I've drilled down on the peanut butter sandwich. I'm getting sandwich. that, man. I still, the paint shaker thing is... <laughs> brilliant. That could be brilliant. I didn't think I was going to come in here and... and I thought I'd come bone. in here and I'd learn something. I didn't think I was going to walk in here and learn something about the peanut butter category. Okay? I right. Yeah, yeah, right. I so yeah, I, 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 yeah, I... <laughs> Right, I'm blown away, buddy. <laughs> well, we'll see if it exists. But Dawson, you it have doesn't the exist. I try to tell you that, man. I know I, I was in the business, <laughs> but it's been a while, and I'm not saying anything. Well, but I'm the with... game could have passed you by. Like no, you, you lost you the stop right there. I'll say <laughs> okay. The game, I can I can read the shells right now. You take me over to Ralph's. I'll tell you what's going on in the category. Now I'll I'll say this. I was uh, we we also had coffee. We had Folgers coffee. Mm-hmm. Pass me by, man. And and Pringles. Pringles, I could I could sell right. Pringles tomorrow. I, I can walk off the street and sell Pringles tomorrow after after twenty two years. But coffee with these uh, Keurig, uh, yeah, thing, I don't know yeah. what the I don't know the You're price right. points. I don't yeah. know the, the sizes. Up there hawking shit. I don't. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what's going on. We have the passage. Sorry, uh, from in fifty years we'll all be chicks. So what's the big deal about getting rid of the peanut butter sandwich? I'll give you two reasons: one practical and one symbolic. First, practical: no sandwich travels better than peanut butter and jelly. 
The time between when it's made at 6.45 in the morning to when the lunch bell rings are five of the toughest hours on a sandwich. (laughs) Sliding around the floor of a school bus in a brown bag, sitting on a bench exposed to the elements, and being mashed into a dank locker will bring an egg salad or a bologna with mayo to its knees, but not the resilient PB&J. Peanut butter and jelly is the only sandwich that actually gets better with time. Like a fine Cabernet that sticks to the roof of your mouth. How many other sandwiches can boast that sitting in the sun makes them taste better? Thus, it's the perfect sandwich for the sack lunch. Also, no sandwich goes better with milk. But this point will be moot in a few months when the school becomes a lactose-free zone. Now for the symbolic. If there's a kid in your class whose heart will explode if somebody whispers the name George Washington Carver, (laughs) by all means, ban peanut butter and jelly. My problem is that kid isn't in my kid's class. We now live in a society where everything's an emergency and we won't acknowledge a difference between the people who get hives from peanuts and the one, ones whose windpipes will swell shut. So who shall we blame? I blame us because we caved to the hypochondriac, red book reading, Oprah watching, crystal rubbing, whole food shopping, survivor of incest moms, and their pussy whipped attorney husbands. Wow, it's a powerful peanut butter insight. Yeah, there. It's, it's it's some strong takes. I mean, the thing that the, the <laughs> yeah. thing that uh, that I the really strongest. like. Yeah, I, I feel um, your point about it, it it improving like wine. It's like a, a Harley Davidson. Don't they get more valuable mm-hmm. a, as as they get older? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a similar thing. I never thought that yeah, the sandwich gets better. And I I also really like that is a that's a that's that's a tough five hours on a sandwich. The it, tough, it's it, grueling. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. They really no sandwich should have to go through that. No, they shouldn't. But, but yet they do. they do it times millions every day in this America. Yeah. Now they've got some technology that when I was a kid I didn't. You know, they oh, uh, they got the little Tupperware thing with yeah, the it's snap got, lid it's got like on a, it. The the ice pack or whatever. Uh, they got the ice thing? pack. Yeah, they yeah, got yes. the weird burper thing. You know, can get yeah, the air out of there. There's some cool stuff going on. Okay? All right. <laughs> well, let's go back. <laughs> sandwich game. Yeah. But again, at best, at best. That uh, egg salad sandwich, you're coming out even. Yeah, it's, you're, a, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be as good as it was five hours ago. You're saying the peanut butter, it it improves. Let me give another example or okay. a metaphor. All right. All right, I like cars. Yeah. In the car world, they go, how much horsepower is this bl- blown turbocharger, whatever V8? How much is it making to the flywheel? That's just right off the engine crank. And they go, how much is it making to the rear wheels? Okay. Because 500 horsepower is on the engine, but by the time it gets to the rear wheels, it's 214, 215. It scrubs it off. The, it scrubs off power because it's got to go through the transmission, drive shaft, differential, and all that kind of stuff. So in the, in the, in the sandwich world, yeah. you know, they start off, you know, I love an egg salad. Right. Don't get me wrong. No, I, I, I know what you're saying, man. No, but but you're it coming, scrubs you're up. Anti egg salad. Even even with the greatest, <laughs> even with the greatest Tupperware in the world, we're still going to scrub off like 21 percent from five hours. You make that sandwich at six in the morning. You eat it at noon. We're going to scrub some off. Peanut butter adds horsepower to the rear wheels. Yeah. The peanut yeah. butter sandwich yeah. is the only 500 horsepower engine that's making 639 <laughs> to the rear <laughs> wheels. Do you understand? I do, man. You should and do I, a whole stand up on this. I'm not a car guy. I I, 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 I lose it, but I, I I get that part, man. All right, you get the metaphor. You, saw, you said something about flywheel, and I, lo- I lost you for a second. It's but right I, off I, I, the crank in okay. the back of the engine Crank's there. tough, too. It's flywheel, uh, <laughs> the clutch goes against the flywheel. That's uh, and the clutch. That's with an. You, you gotta have. A, that's a stick shift, right? Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Right, peanut butter sales. All right. Man. Let's. Come on. But, but let me tell you, you the don't, difference. You don't sell peanut butter for ten years, dedicate your life to it, and then have time to be a car guy. You understand? Know? They gave us a, a. They gave us a company car. They gave us a, a Ford time. Taurus. It's oh, really? company issue. Mm-hmm. And I, I get in, I drive it, and they give me a new one a, a, a couple of years. So now back to my hippie mom. Well, we can go back to your hippie mom. I'd kind of like to come back to the part about you saying that 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 you that, you, <laughs> that peanut butter sells itself, man. I mean, you give me a chance really to, to, to Let, can defend I make my myself. Point? Make your point. I think you did. I don't know. <laughs> There's always more points to make. Yeah, yeah. No, please. Yeah. There is no creature on the planet that will not consume peanut butter. Whenever you bait a trap, if you're trying to catch a possum or a rat or a pterodactyl, I guarantee 
if we were in Jurassic World and somebody said we got to catch a pterodactyl, someone would go find some peanut butter. Yes. It's a universally agreed upon it is. food. The great food. Equalizer. All yeah. the God's creatures consume peanut butter. So how hard could it be to sell? No, it, okay. <laughs> again, again, Adam. I'm not saying that that the category is tough to sell. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm saying. You're going up against these guys like Skippy and Peter Pan, and then uh-huh. now you got the specialty people coming in. Yeah. It's it's like who who's going to get the ad? This who's getting the back to school ad? Because there's mm-hmm. one it comes around once a year the back to school ad, all mm-hmm. right? And you know where do we see the ad? In the, the circular, you know. Yeah, you, okay. You, you, for the market, you, you're gonna you go to the market. You, they'll mail them to you, direct mm-hmm. mail to your all house. Right. You'll see. A, uh, sure. I, I imagine you guys are Ralphs or Gelsons. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know the Avons. They'll send you a circular. I'm clipping and pasting. Sure. And scrapbooking. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and on and on day on on the front page, I guarantee you. The week before your kids go back to school, there's going to be a peanut butter. It's mm. going to be an 18 ounce peanut butter. That's where the wars are fought. Okay, oh, the 28 ounce, 40 ounce. You got your four pound, your club pack of two forties. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the wars are fought on 18 ounce. All right, mm. and I'm going to say, I don't. You walk into Rouse. We're on the West Coast. You're probably paying three thirty for an 18 ounce jar, Jeff. Right mm-hmm. now, okay. They're going to run an ad. They're going to they're going to get you in the door. They're two for three. I bet. Mm. You go two for three on eighteen ounce. That happens for three dollars. Three bucks. You pick up two wow. eighteen ounce. There may be a limit six or something like that. Uh-huh. You, you know, you can, you, these right. people can't go out of business. Right. But uh, yeah, you, somebody wants that ad. All right. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 it's a it's a dog fight to get that ad. And some of these guys. And that's where you come in. That's where I come in. Man. Understand. And I gotta talk. I gotta talk about data. Hey guys, you know you you moved the category this much last year when you ran our peanut butter. The category itself didn't move at all the other right. Day. You know, now, and I got to fight against these guys doing stuff that's unprincipled. Okay. Mm. These guys would, uh, you know, I'd come in when I was just, just new. Hey, Bob, I got a great idea for you, how you can grow the, grow the profit margin in, in the peanut butter category in your store. Uh, you got any baseball tickets? Oh, inviting them out Ooh. to the game. No, you got to schmooze a little. Mike, Mike, we didn't do it. Wouldn't do it. We didn't do it. Yeah. So our company, we, we didn't you had to go it. against the schmoozers. Yeah. I meet I'd, some of my lady friends. <laughs> They're out in the car. Yeah, this kind of stuff. I, I didn't know. We didn't do, do a little it. bump of no, below. None anything. of that. None of that. Yeah. Man. Yeah. None of that, man. I sold on. I sold on data. I sold on the strength of my brand. Yeah. Right? And a lot. I lost. A no, times. no. I they look. I worked in the radio industry. Like when you hear some of those songs in the eighties, and you're like, "This is the fucking worst song I've ever heard in my life." Why is it being spun every, six times an hour? It's like somebody showed up with some fucking sack of cocaine and three chicks. And they went, look, do a couple of rails, get your dick sucked, and think about playing Flock of Seagulls. Yeah. And that's how A and R company and record labels worked. So I'm back sure there, there was some payola in the in the grocery store. I had to be. Well, it sounds like what I was doing m- might have been a little less sexy. Uh, I don't think there was a lot of I don't think there was a lot of blow and hooker. It was, okay. it was baseball tickets, maybe uh I The don't point know. is is someone was getting their Palm grease. Yes, yes, and it, and I wasn't I wasn't part of it. And the guy would be like, uh, the guy would beat me up every time. Well, I, you got any baseball? I'm like, I, we don't do that. You know, right. I, I can show you. I can show you some data where you're gonna. I, I, I got a boy at home. Uh, he, he lives with his mother, but I got him this week, and uh, he likes baseball. He likes yeah, right. he, he don't like uh, profit margin. So Jeff wouldn't stoop to nah, that. No, nah, we didn't do that stuff. But the guy would always. I mean. I kind of feel like he had some respect for me, and that he just knew I was holding back these baseball tickets. Mm. Like, like after like six months, he's still trying to shake me down for baseball tickets. Well, I think there's a kind of dignity in what you did. I and, think so, and, and I'd like to think so. And they would think, let's talk about jelly with a name like Smuckers. You got to be good. That was the thing. You don't give away baseball tickets. You must have a hell of a peanut butter. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, see, see, and then there were guys like you that I could talk to. Guys that saw uh, things strategically rather than tactically. Mm -hmm. Uh, So back to my mom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're saying a little bit hippie-ish. Very hippie-ish. Okay. And I just want to tell you guys the difference between the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich ever and the one that came out of the Corolla house in 1975. 
uh, the chasm between oh. those two because it's hard to mess you, up a PB and J. Everyone thinks they're thinking about the same peanut butter and jelly yeah. sandwich. That the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that my friends had that was made on Wonder Bread, yeah. white bread with the Jif creamy, yeah. and then the uh, Smucker's grape or Welch's grape jelly, heaven, Nirvana. The one my mom made. With the Laura Scudder's unsalted, unsalted, oh. <laughs> un- she had Flavorless. raw, unsalted <laughs> peanut butter. Do you know what raw peanuts taste like? You don't even know they exist. They, it, t- they taste like a cow spit cud into your mouth. It's a, it's a texture. It's not a flavor. It's just a texture. Was there any jelly? Ah. Uh, we haven't got to the bread. Okay. Okay. Sorry. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the bread was like 14 grains sprouted, had to cut it with Damn. a serrated knife, could never get the thickness. <laughs> you couldn't get it thin because it would fall apart. There was yeah. nothing, yeah. nothing bound it together. <laughs> and when you took this raw, unsalted <laughs> peanut paste, you couldn't spread it. No. You can't call it butter. It's, you, it's not butter. No, it's not. It's peanut paste. <laughs> and as you tried to paste it, it would roll. It would roll, and it would pick up pieces of the bread. It looked like a cat turd rolled down a dirt hill. <laughs> a fucking disaster. And you had to take, put the knife down, two hands, two hands, and put it down like silly putty on the comic strips on Sunday. You had to hold yes. it down. Yes. You had to Mash it with your hands because it would roll up and you'd mash it in there. The bread was thick and chewy. The ratio was all fucked up because of the <laughs> thickness of the bread. The peanuts were unsalted and unroasted raw. Roll it down. There was no jelly. No, no. You had honey. That's yeah. all you could do yeah. Yeah. was honey on this thing. You would pick it up. It would fall <laughs> apart. Yeah, it's total. Out. Total disaster. Yeah. A complete and utter disaster. Yeah. I mean, Are I we, never, do we go nutty or smooth? You mean, uh, well, just giving you guys, it's four to one. Smooth? Four to one, smooth. The people uh, prefer uh, smooth to really? crunchy. Now, these are uh, 2001 numbers. Right, like I don't, I don't. That I don't, still I, sounds right. I think it's. I. I would. I, they don't. They don't let me look at the data anymore. Like I, sure. I, I had access to the IRI data back yeah. then, but right. logged you yeah, out. But but I would say, yeah, log me out, man. I've tried, you know. But uh, I bet you were. I bet you it's similar. I am probably smooth most of the time, but every now and then. I'm not, I'm not going to turn down I, a crunchy I sandwich. I think smooth for a sandwich is good, but maybe for a scoop on a spoon, I'll go with the crunchy. Oh, yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you know, speaking of data, Yeah. You ready to be outraged? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I, I I'm, I don't think I'm going to get as angry as I did when you said that that, that peanut butter sells itself. You know, I, I mean, you, you sort of took a shot at what, what I spent I did, the really. better, better part of my life doing. We'll, we'll you know? turn the page. Yeah. I sat next to a woman on a flight who worked for like the Mounds or Nestle company or yeah. whatever. Goobers and Raisinets. She was in charge of Goobers and Raisinets. Yeah. Told me Raisinets outsell Goobers 10 to 1. Don't care. 10 to 1. I was like, 10 to 1. Goobers, no, a chocolate no. covered peanut. That's Don't, the best. No. And she's like, and she said, no, Raisinets. I fucking raisins suck for dessert. I said it's the name. It's the name. It's the name. Raisin Ed's It's cool a nice name, name but it's a, it, it, 10 to 1. That's what she said. She may have had a couple of pops on the plane. Yeah, I yeah. Talking out we, of her ass. Yeah. <laughs> she never even worked for the Nestle company. <laughs> I mean, I would have like, did you get a business card? You're right. Was, did you look at her briefcase and did it have some Nestle nah, stitching on it? Nah, I didn't validate. She yeah. had baseball tickets. I'm not no. saying... Yeah, I'm not saying... That I don't. I went up against these guys in the coffee category. They had Hills Brothers. Mm, Nestle did. Uh-huh. Uh, it was an also ran brand. It was uh-huh. a regional brand, if anything. Uh, but yeah. uh, I wouldn't. I myself don't care for. I'll have some raisins, but I don't, a chocolate raisin is just. It's not really a treat to me. No, yeah, Goober's yeah, the Goober's. best. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they out. She told me ten to one. This twenty years ago. Who knows? The um. <clears throat> That's oh the stand up special. <laughs> Well, we're kind of doing the stand-up special. Sure. How'd well, you I and Nate Bargatze get uh, hooked up? Uh, Nate, I met him first. We did a, a show for, I think it was Country Music Television back in the day, and he was just a kid at that time, and you know, 
I was like, wow, this kid's really, really good. And then, um, and then I, when I lived in New York City, uh, I, I would bump into him here and there. And uh, he wanted to make a couple of uh, specials that were would appeal to his audience. You know, some something uh, family friendly. I guess. Yeah, because uh, you guys yeah. are similar in that you take sort of stories, ideas, and material that don't seem to be even remotely funny, and then turn them into something funny. Yeah, thanks, man. We're pretty similar. I, I would say our bank accounts are probably not all all that similar. To <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, he no, he's great, man. He's 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 really really good, man. And he's got a new hour already. I watched him the other day. Oh, he's great. Yeah, he's got. He's, he put the special out just recently. He's got yeah, a whole new hour. On, yeah. yeah. All right. What we should do? What's Kevin Dillon doing? Is he coming in in uh, fifteen minutes or yeah. something like that? You know That's what amazing. I want to. You know what I was thinking of. I had this thought. So I love me some Entourage. Yeah. And Kevin Dillon is great in it he's so underrated in it because he's simultaneously macho and always having his feelings hurt yeah he's constantly yeah. getting his feelings hurt and his eyebrows like grow go up and he feels really bad and then he pulls himself together and yeah. he gets really tough again then yeah. he gets really scared <laughs> yeah. he's he's like aggressive and scared yeah, con yeah. constantly everyone else is sort of in the middle somewhere he's so human man. he's That's he's right. perfect yeah but then I had this thought, and now we have to work it out. Um, he plays the older brother of the guys, the big star with all the women and the big networks and everything like that. And he's constantly in this position of playing second fiddle to, to his super famous brother. Right. And, and it's always the jokes on him and everything. But Kevin Dillon has a famous brother. Right. And is it Matt? Yeah, Matt, Matt Dillon. Dillon. Yeah. Matt yeah. Dillon was a superstar when I was a kid. Like, oh, heartthrob! Every girl who was fourteen had a poster of Matt yeah. Dillon. Yeah, and he was working with all the biggest directors. And yeah. I don't know what he's up to lately, but he was a huge star. And then there was Kevin Dillon, so he kind of lived it. Yeah, in his, in his in his personal life, that had to have helped in his audition. I'm sure. And and. Matt Dillon was a big star from the time. I don't know what their age difference is. I'm not sure how it works, but like Matt Dillon was a big star when Matt Dillon was 15. My Bodyguard, I think, was that's the first movie I oh, saw. Oh, was in he the in that? With my parents. He was. He was the. He was in like Rumblefish. And yeah. Kevin is two years younger. He had to hang around for a full decade plus <laughs> in the shadow of his right. heartthrob older brother. He, the, the Vietnam movie, he was really good Platoon. at. Platoon? Yeah, man. Kevin. You, Bunny, yeah. was that his name? Bu Bunny or something? I can't remember. But yeah, he was great in that. But yeah. I, it just dawned on me last night that this was art imitating life. Yeah. Yeah. I I think you're right, though. I think he, that they probably, when they called him in, were like, get Matt Dillon's brother in. <laughs> no, they said, get Matt Dillon. <laughs> yeah. got, and then they, they said, Matt Dillon, Dillon won't do they this. Got, <laughs> they got Mark Wahlberg's brother, Donnie. They got... Um, Patrick Swayze's brother. Oh yeah. Oh Swayze's brother was yeah. He he put him in a couple of those movies. Next to Ken, I think he was in there. Yeah. yeah. Swayze. Don Swayze. Is that his name? Don Swayze. Don Swayze. Said it. Stand by it. Okay. Don Swayze Don looks more like Patrick Swayze than Patrick Swayze. Is he that close? He's further. Yeah. He looks like... Like an enhanced version. It's like when, you, <laughs> when somebody puts a, a caricature of you up at a deli. Yeah. If you yeah. do Patrick Swayze, you will draw Don Swayze dead nuts on because yeah. he's an exaggerated <laughs> yeah, yeah. Patrick Swayze. Usually not that flattering, those things, are they, man? No, nah, not just, usually. They, they no, a, if you got something... If I you, got a cauliflower ear, If you man. got a cauliflower yeah, ear or a, big nose or yeah. double chin, that's the first thing they do. Yeah, they're going to... He looks more like Patrick Swayze yeah. than Patrick Swayze. <laughs> he does. Man. God's like, we're going to have one really good-looking dancer, and then we'll have evil Patrick <laughs> Swayze. That'll be you, Don Swayze. You'll be evil Patrick Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed that, man. He does. All right. If you were drawing an unflattering Patrick Swayze, you would draw Don Swayze. Yeah. Dead nuts on. <laughs> you would have him sit, and then Don Swayze would be like, you're putting me up at the deli? No, I'm putting nah, Patrick up nah, at the deli, nah, man, but I need you, because I'm doing an over-the-top version of him, and that's you, and also you're available. What do you think the over-the-top version of, of Don Swayze would look like, though, man? 
Oh, that that would be <laughs> the Sitting devil himself. Yeah. Yeah. And it would, you couldn't draw it. The paper catch on fire. Don Swayze is like AI tried to create Patrick Swayze. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's the only brother that's more exactly of the other brother. It's like Patrick Swayze's parents had a threesome with Patrick Swayze. That's right. <laughs> and that's and the outcome. That's Can what they threesomes were. That's what they would I do. I didn't know how that's how that if, Well, <laughs> look, if you took the parents and Patrick Swayze and put them all in a Cuisinart and he poured out a smoothie, it would be Don <laughs> Swayze. You're right. He's more than Patrick. Man, that guy's got a voice. Good God. Don, oh, oh, Dawson. 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 You're pointing at Patrick <laughs> Swayze. <laughs> yeah, he's got a he voice. He sang, yeah. uh, have you ever heard of She's Like the Wind? Oh, yeah. That's a voice, man. That was a hit. It was no lettering. Lettering with John Travolta. <laughs> 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 well, you got to find letter in by John Drolla because there's a part where he goes, I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up. That's a, good run. Like, that's a great, yeah. there's a yeah, great man. run. He's, he's exposed at that point, man. All right, we'll find that. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back talk uh, more peanut butter with Greg right after this. <laughs> Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Taro. T-U-R-O dot com. Just thrive. Oh, man. You've got so much stress. Don't you just want to hit the pause button and just breathe? Just Calm from Just Thrive can help. Just Calm's all-natural blend of mood-lifting, psychobiotics, and brain-nourishing B vitamins helps you take back control and feel your most cool, calm, and collected. Uh, I take mine every day. Multiple studies prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus in as little as four weeks. Or try Just Thrive Probiotic, a spore probiotic that banishes gas and bloat and uh, helps your gut produce serotonin. And that's the happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep. Once you get onto this, you won't get off. I had dinner with the owners, the founders, and I had Tina on the show. And... It's a real product. They're hugely invested in it, and it works. I take it. You take it, too. Am I right, Dawson? With Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic, you'll have the ultimate stress-fighting duo to help you feel cool, collected, and in control. Get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM. Via tour experiences are what people love most about travel. I mean, God, taking my son fishing in Alaska, that was so amazing. I'll never forget it. Viator, it's a website and app for booking travel experiences, like seeing Stonehenge or a walking tour of Rome. Over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries. Millions of real travelers' reviews. So you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. With Viator, there's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. So let's get out there and experience life, shall we? Download the Viator app now and use the code Viator10. Get 10% off your first booking. One app, over 300,000 experiences you'll never forget. Do more with Viator. All right. We have a letter in by John Travolta, just because we can. Yeah. And and did anyone ever find a, a Laura Scudder's peanut butter in a paint can <laughs> shaker? Has anyone tried it? Yeah. Is anyone, some, in, a, in a world where everyone has filmed themselves doing everything. It's not happening, man. And you got it. Somebody, instead of looking for it on the internet... Tell somebody to call the patent office and let's get this thing going, man. 
You're right. Yeah, because it's the, it's the court size. The fun the of the work. fun of going into the bringing your kid in there and be like, "Yeah, hey, we're going to shake it up." I and, should go talk to the Laura Scudders people and go like, "Look, you're getting your ass handed to you by right? Jeff and Skippy and well, Peter Pan." Oh, there is a video. <laughs> Let me offer but what is that's salsa. No, what is that? that looks like salsa to me. Doesn't look like peanut. No, it's peanut, mixing peanut butter with a paint shaker. So all right, let's see it. Let's see yeah. it. Okay, everybody. This could be an epic disaster or a total win. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> All right, there it is. it's going. I watch the shit out of that. I might just buy one for myself, just yeah. because I cannot deal with the oil slick at the top and the peanuts at the bottom and. But it's it's in a plastic container, yeah. which seems not quite right to me. Okay, I see. You know the brand? Adam, all, it says all Adams. natural. Adams is a it's a all natural elitist. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. They think they're, yeah, they they think they're, they're better than me and you. They're peanut butter mm. <laughs> better. <laughs> now the guys are screwing. I told you there was a video of every everything. I can't believe this. That looks good. It doesn't look good. It's, 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 it looks it's, pretty good. It's a. It, you think so? I don't know. It's it a, looks better a little, than a well oil mixed, slick no? at the little, top. Little liquidy for me. Man. All slick. right. Yeah. All uh, right. Well, now just put it in the fridge for ten minutes. Now I do want to say, if you are going to go with this, because that's dude, this guy didn't have the kind of resources. It's a, well, first off, he was using a pneumatic one, which is weird. Yeah. I like electric. Okay. So one, but, so yeah. let's say we do, don't go to Laura Scudder, man. Just so you know. Uh, GIFs has gotten into this, some of that stuff. They have a uh -huh. GIF natural. And my buddy, so GIFs, GIFs with Smuckers now. My mm -hmm. buddy's the number two guy at Smuckers now. Wow. John Brazzi, chief operating officer. And I I don't want to come on your podcast and brag a lot, all right? But let's, let, three days, the, the special comes out three days later. Guess who watches it? The number two guy at Smuckers. No. Mark Smucker. The, of Smucker, S Smucker, oh. Smucker watched my special, wow. and liked it. <clears throat> so if you want to get your paint uh, can thing going, I got a direct you, line. You're on like one phone yes, call yeah, I, away. I a, yeah, I can, I can make a call. We'll okay? talk yeah. after the show. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. So I, I, I'm not asking for a lot here. I want you know a little piece. Yeah. Yeah. We have Travolta we'll singing uh, "Letter, Letter In." That's my favorite. Oh, no, you're gonna be lead guitar. <laughs> Not doing a Bruce Willis medley. <laughs> Patrick Swayze's coming in. All right, Swayze's was a hit. I know this, this was a hit, but <laughs> this is a hit. I'd like to do a podcast called Adam talks to people that are his age about shit they only care about. <laughs> Because no one else gets the reference I'm your guy to David's that, yeah. soul, <laughs> uh, no one else, no one else would get would get it. Yeah, that was uh, Vinny Barbarino from back in the day. God, everyone, oh yeah, telling that session guy. Look, <laughs> we got Swayze coming in at noon at two o'clock. We got David Soul coming in from uh, Starsky and Hutch, and then at uh, four we got Leonard Nimoy. Wants to lay down a few tracks. <laughs> He's gonna cover. He's gonna cover some Beatles songs. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but I just don't feel. Hey, man. Hey, man. You, you were you were bitching about child support, weren't you? Yeah. Weren't you? You you play the track because that guy <laughs> was playing with the mamas and the papas and the association and all the cool acts in the late '60s. Yeah. And now it's and if you would have come home a little bit more, maybe you wouldn't be right. Maybe you wouldn't be divorced and you, you'd have money. Okay. '70s ruined everything. <laughs> it was coke. I you think, think that's Coke, what it was. I yeah. think Coke made everyone make horrible decisions, and this and and who was doing the Coke? The guys at the top, the decision makers, were doing most the Coke, and that's what got us the horrible architecture. That the idea, <laughs> yeah. the guy who who came up with the Landau roof, the guy who's like, you know what? It's Detroit. It's 1974. We can't make a car that starts in the morning, but I want to upholster the roof of the car. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can pull that off. Yeah. Like, are you really? Yeah. I don't yeah. think that's going to work. Hold was, on. Was, was, that, when the, was that when the, the, we started 
cheaping out on the metal uh, yeah. uh, on the cars in Detroit? It was the late 70s? Or was yeah, that- the, we started the big decline starting like the early 70s. And then by the mid 70s, we just completely bottomed out in Detroit. It's, but- not, it's not doing it, it doesn't run. Let me show you the coin dispenser thing. Right. We got middle. something it's, it's called really good. an opera window. <laughs> we're going to put it next to the padded oh, land yeah. out roof. <laughs> it's a window too small to look out. Yeah. It's called an opera window. <laughs> That's the point. And then we're going to upholster the outside of the car. Yeah. It's like, we can't make an inside upholstery <laughs> that'll fucking <laughs> hold up. A cloth exterior. <laughs> we can't do a dashboard that doesn't explode in two years. How the fuck are we going to upholster the roof, Tim? Let me do a little more coke and get back to you <laughs> on this. Now, you guys are looking. They show You're showing us a picture of a Toyota Camry with a fake, fake convertible. But that's not the Landau. Yeah, that thing runs right the there. The Landau was the American car <laughs> oh, wow. where they went with the vinyl. We're looking at an opera window and a Landau roof here. That's how I see what up. you're saying. That's how high. The guy who thought John Travolta could sing was <laughs> high, peaked up out of his. He'd been up for four days. <laughs> That's all. They would just watch TV and go, that guy's popular. That show's a hit. Get him in here. Yeah, but he can't sing, boss. He, he didn't sing. You want a rail? <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Just put him in there. I know, but I, 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 have you heard him sing? Well, put the fucking wall of sound behind him. <laughs> He'll get lost. <laughs> He'll just be one of the bricks in the wall of sound. The thing is, you got to wonder who they tried it with where it didn't work. Like, yes. yeah, yeah, There's like Horseshack's got a, a, a track laid down or something like that. Where, yeah, yeah, who didn't work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who yeah. didn't make the celebrity singing cut from the 70s? Late 70s, yeah. Yeah. Char- well, Charo did sing, actually. Yeah, Charo yeah. played that flamenco guitar. Yeah, she was good. good. She was yeah. good. Yeah, very sexual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I was into that. Yeah, me too, man. Early. Really liked it. Just a tight little body, big hair. Yeah, yeah. Always in a good mood. Very good mood, man. Jovial. Yeah. Happy. Go fair. Yeah. yeah. Hoochie, coochie, coochie, coochie. She was shaking her tits yeah. around. <laughs> it was awesome. You beautiful girl. Yeah. That was a good Coke-based decision to put her on <laughs> yeah. the love boat. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me give the uh, plug. The uh, Salesman is the name of the YouTube special, Greg Warren. Super funny. Come back anytime. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, we got uh, Dylan out there waiting. So we'll talk to uh, Kevin about God everything. Could I, I Literally, I was just watching Entourage, the movie. I love Entourage so much. I love the movie. I love the yeah. series. I love it. But just... Comedic gold, Kevin Dillon. Yes. Maybe underappreciated. I'm not sure. You think so? I don't know. He's kind of the star of that show. Yeah. Yeah. He's certainly the comedic star of that show. Piven, I guess, was was pretty funny, too. Super funny in that show. But like breakout star. Kevin Dillon just made me laugh. Oh, man. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. We'll come back with Kevin Dillon right after this. Just thrive. Oh, man. You've got so much stress. Don't you just want to hit the pause button and just breathe? Just Calm from Just Thrive can help. Just Calm's all-natural blend of mood-lifting, psychobiotics, and brain-nourishing B vitamins helps you take back control and feel your most cool, calm, and collected. Uh, I take mine every day. Multiple studies prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus in as little as four weeks. Or try Just Thrive Probiotic, a spore probiotic that banishes gas and bloat and uh, helps your gut produce serotonin. And that's the happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep. Once you get onto this, you won't get off. I had dinner with the owners, the founders, and I had Tina on the show. And it's a real product. They're hugely invested in it. And it works. I take it. You take it too. Am I right, Dawson? With Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic, you'll have the ultimate stress-fighting duo to help you feel cool, collected, and in control. Get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM. Morgan and Morgan, let me lay a stat on you. People, 15 to 24 have the highest rate of ER visits due to car accidents. And uh, I got kids. And they're about that age, so it seems, well, they're right in that age group. It's kind of scary. So if you've ever been injured, check out Morgan & Morgan. Submitting a claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. 
Uh, it's, you can use it the same way you use like a ride share app. It is that easy and even easier than swiping right on a dating app, which, by the way, leads to more trouble where this could lead to more money. America's largest injury law firm, 100 plus offices nationwide, over 800 lawyers, more than 15 billion recovered for clients. So if you're injured in an accident, check out Morgan and Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. So it's no risk. Morgan and Morgan, right, Dawson? For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, The Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will too. So you can search The Jordan Harbinger Show. That is H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Kevin Dillon is in studios. Got a movie that's coming out, or it is available on VOD and on digital as well. Called uh, Buddy Games, Spring Awakening, and yeah, it is Buddy out. Games too. Buddy Games too. Oh, Buddy Games too. Well, well, Spring Awakening, but it is the second one. Right. It's a sequel. Um, I was literally found myself tuning in to Entourage the movie somewhere in the middle of it, ah. and uh, just watched it all the way through because uh, you make me laugh so much <laughs> in that. But I, but it's now I'm sort of approaching it from a psychodynamic standpoint. You always look like your feelings are hurt, and then and then <laughs> He's you a get sensitive guy, man. <laughs> and then you get angry and a lot of bravado. He's got a lot of anger too. <laughs> I, uh, but is that like is that a place you go to? Like as a kid, you were disappointed, or life was tough, or, or you know or what? It, it kind of just develops as you're creating the character from mm-hmm. uh, from the beginning. He was always the jealous brother, kind of jealous, right. but he loves his brother and. Right. You know, he wants that career. So I, I played that uh, that sensitive thing, and th- they wrote me as just angry, too. So uh, so I ran, ran with that, too. Right. And uh, it's just fun to, to – I didn't protect this character. I wanted him to be completely flawed and a little crazy, and that's what he was. I, I just I, – I don't know. I'm underrated in the comedy department. I, that, I, and I was always early money on Entourage. Ah, Took nice. a minute. For those to come around, you know, yeah. people people stand around with their arms folded, especially with comedy. But I was that way with Family Guy. I was like, uh, yeah. season one, I was like, this is some funny ass shit. And I was like, well, I don't know, it's no Simpsons. And then then they sort <laughs> yeah. of they sort of came around to it. Yeah. But you, I, we were talking off the air, or I, we were talking on the air, but you weren't on the air. And I was thinking about uh, Matt Dillon, your famous brother, who was more famous than you understand anyone who's under the age of 45 yeah. does not really know how famous your brother he, was he when was he like was one 17. Of the Beatles. He was like one of the Beatles there was when we little, were kids. He got you know, he got chased down the street by girls going, ah! I mean, there. I mean, yeah. we were, we would run from girls, the from ro- like 50 like the, teenage the, the girls. Rock, wow. The Rock is famous, but not so famous that everyone has a poster of him in their bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Your brother's yeah. on a poster. we Put posters yeah, up. Yeah, he was kind of embarrassed by that whole thing, but he was a big teen idol, and he wanted to be, wanted to be taken serious. And they're not going to take you serious when you got your poster hanging on every girl's bedroom. Was but, that? But it's pretty cool, actually, when you think. So, about where'd it. you guys yeah. grow up? In New York, Westchester County, New York. And he's two years older than you. About about a year and a half. And. Did it just start out that he like started going auditions, or were you acting? You know, what, first? he was he was cutting class at the Homics 
which is a junior high school, and a casting director just saw him hanging out smoking a cigarette. He was 13 years old. And he's like, this kid's got the look. Let me talk to him. And he said, hey, I want you to come in and audition. He came in, nailed the audition at 13. He dropped out of high school, out of school, and just started uh, started acting. And I mean, I dropped out too, but he dropped out really early, really, yeah. really early. What were your Where were your parents with all this stuff? They were, uh, you know, they were they were down. They were down with it. You know, my dad's an artist, and uh, and my mom loves the arts, so mm-hmm. uh, they were they were cool with it. They didn't want him to drop out of school, so he he did get ter- tutored early on, as did I. But you don't you don't feel like you're in the game when you're being ter- tutored. You want to work on your character, and you want to. You just yeah. So we uh, stopped the tutoring thing on the set. How old were you when Platoon came around? I was about eighteen. I might oh, even have been young. seventeen when I went to the Philippines. <clears throat> I believe I had a birthday over there. Wow, I mean, we were there for three months in the Philippines. In the shooting. Philippines, and it was just crazy. It was my first time out of the country, <laughs> and I loved it. You know, I was talking to Charlie Sheen because we did a. We'll you know probably talk about that later, but we did a little uh, a pilot. We'll see if it gets picked up. But we were talking about um, the greatest times we had on a movie. My The greatest time I ever had was doing the f- platoon in the Philippines, being that young. And the worst experience he ever had was doing platoon. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out why. And I think it's because his character was supposed to hate it there. Right. And my character loved it there. He loved, right. he loved you know being in Vietnam and just getting to do whatever the fuck he wants and M16s and, you know. How'd that whole thing come about? I just auditioned. I auditioned. I saw, I met Oliver Stone. He's like, you're my guy. And then the thing fell through. So, I mean, I actually, when I got the job, I was probably six, 17 years old. And then uh, it came back. So he lost financing. And then he got some financing again, called me up, said, you ready to go? And I said, yes. But by that time, there was a big revolution in the philippines you know they're ousting marcos there were tanks in the streets and mm-hmm. battles going on mm-hmm. and my parents like you we don't want you going to the philippines right now right and i was like try and stop me <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to the philippines i'm going, I'm going to do this movie <laughs> this is my chance this could be my break you know Get turned it. out it was right did uh so your brother was this big heartthrob sensation and he worked with coppola right yeah, yeah. And they did did he do? He did the Outsiders and Rumblefish and Rumblefish, yeah. like the big heart throbby, yeah. You know, before the Brat Pack, but before that, he did Little Darlings, which kind of really made him the big uh, teen idol. Yeah, he was the hot dude. They, yeah, the, they, they used to do creepy I, teen movies. Like there was one called Foxes. With like Jodie Foster oh, right, and a right. bunch yeah, of, yeah. and the, the, there's, there's a bunch of movies where like, hey, I got an idea of a movie. What if a bunch of fifteen year old girls put on too much makeup and go down to the Sunset Strip and have <laughs> sex with older dudes? It's like, yeah. all right, that'll be the theme of the movie. Like, and yeah. little darlings was he was like at a camp counselor or something. He, or? he was not, but uh, or lot, what, there he is right there. Right, <laughs> he was. I I don't know how he old. He was probably about fourteen, right there. Right but now, yeah, uh, uh, Armando. What's his name again? Uh, yeah, great actor. Yeah, he was the camp, camp That's counselor, right. and that was that was rape, basically right. in the right. movie. But it was about like these girls getting laid for the first time. They make a bet to see who can get laid first. Yeah, but there were fourteen and, I mean, and a half. I know like it's that, really crazy when you think about. Wow. There were. It was during right. It was at the tail end of statutory rape rock where guys were like i pulled up my chevy van she was barefoot i threw her in the van i took her down to the lake and dropped her off when i was done with her it's like she's 15 like there were all these songs about banging 15 year olds it's crazy and then they made movies about it yeah too like it was pretty like yeah she's so she's in the ninth grade. She knows. Yeah, yeah. She knows enough to sleep. She's with good to go. Armando Desante. Yeah, yeah, something like Wait, that. Wait, what was <sighs> who the cast of I Little? I think he got that right though. Darling. Something like that. Asante. Mm-hmm. Oh, there yeah. it is. Asante. Ar- yeah. Ar- Armand. 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 That's it. Armand. We threw an O in there. <laughs> right. Great actor. Great actor. Good guy. Like and, the fifteen-year-old, uh, but he looked, you know, he, he was like hairy, and you know, he had a you know hairy chest, and he it was just like a, he was like a full-grown man, 
So did hit so, on a 12, 13 year old girl. So you know, your, was, your brother gets off to this meteoric start, but he's a heartthrob. So now we don't know if we take him that seriously, but he does work with these big directors and yeah. stuff like that. But then you do the ultimate sort of street cred actor movie, you do Vietnam Oliver Stone. Yeah. So now you kind of get past him in well, the legit- I don't think I I don't think I ever passed him. But uh I caught up a little bit. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Um but he kept by the time I had done Platoon, I think he did a couple other really really good movies as well too. So he kept them going. You know, he always worked. I'm trying drug to store cowboy. He did drugstore cowboy, but God, that I was know way too platoon. much about. Yeah, your yeah. Brother. Drugstore cowboy is great. The Flamingo Kid. Do you Gritty. remember how great that movie was? The Flamingo Kid was about a rich, like beach club, tennis club. Yeah, and he was the Cabana Boy. He, he was, was the Cabana Jeffrey, Boy. the Cabana Boy. Right. Who yeah. Was, uh, it was great. That movie is such so well done. And is, Gin Phil, they're all playing gin, and uh, they um. And I don't know, did your brother taper off or did he step back or did he find some other muse or like I haven't he's seen still, him and he's still working. He's still, I don't, he, but I never see him on like in, talk shows and stuff. No, like, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't love do it. any he of that love stuff. It. No, no, he doesn't love it. But he's in li- living in Rome right now. Oh, and, really? Uh, he's got a Roman girlfriend and he took an apartment in Rome. And he loves it. And, and he's, he's working there. Speaking Italian and, <laughs> and he has, but he's been working in Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. So he just wants sort of Marvin Hagler on everyone's ass. <laughs> just moved to fucking Italy and started acting. Yeah. Well, he's got a, he's got a couple things coming out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be seeing him soon. Oh, I look yeah. forward to I that. I wish I knew the titles. I don't but have he, them. But is he like, like you're jovial, you're sort of approachable, you're kind of knock around kind of guy. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, and I like, like that. You'll go on someone's podcast. You'll do yeah. a late night show or whatever. I would never see your brother like knocking around that way. Yeah. You won't see him. Uh, you might You might see him on a show. I could probably get him on here. He'll, he'd come on and talk with you. He's, he's Even he's, with the time difference? <laughs> you'd have to adjust to the time a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to talk to him. Oh, he's yeah, about to be yeah. in the new Wes Anderson movie. Yeah, I, t- I knew oh, he he's had in some, Asteroid some City. Some good things coming with, out. Like, Tom Hanks with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was doing something with Tom Hanks. I knew he had some good things coming out, but I that's great. I think Tom Hanks is in Asteroid City for some Pretty reason. Pretty awesome. Pretty Wes awesome. Wes Anderson. That's awesome. So when you get the, the call for Entourage, like how the character was pitched to you, did you already think, oh, got this nailed? You know what? To be honest with you, I had the audition. I got my manager who's here right now, and she's probably laughing. But she, I, they gave me the sides, and I'm like, I can't do anything with this. I got like two lines. They're not funny. I said, I have them rewrite. I want all the characters. Make it between two people. Give me all the funny lines. So I took the lines from Turtle, and <laughs> so it was me talking to, to E. Mm-hmm. And I took all the funny lines, and uh, and I was able to impress because you know you need you need material to work with when you're doing an audition scene, and uh, and I nailed it. I got the room laughing, and that was that. But then there was five more auditions and a screen test, and and then they had to pair us up together to see if the chemistry's there. And by the way, uh, yeah, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson in Asteroid City is it called? Wow. Yeah, but there's. Everyone's in this thing, so you got to look that oh, up. I'm I not t- in there. I told those. This guys, is an outrage. <laughs> I told them something that you're definitely in is. Uh, it's so funny. I just said to Ben, who's 27 in there, I'm like, got to pull a clip. Johnny Dramas has to go to the valley, and he's, he's miserable. <laughs> you got to hydrate if you're going to the valley, <laughs> right? And, and he at 27 is like, oh, best episode ever. And That's I, a good I one. love that episode because I grew up in the valley. I lived in all these shitty houses with no air conditioning (laughs) and no insulation. And you just bake inside these houses. Like the valley get to 113 degrees. Yeah. And it was so brutal. So you would go to places just to cool down. Like you would go to stores or the mall or the movie movie theater. theater, Right. Yeah. Oh, you'd watch movies. I saw Little Darlings five times just to get out of the heat. <laughs> you sick pervert. <laughs> so I told him, I don't know, find a clip of uh, Johnny Drama having to go to the valley, which was, oh, this made was me, a fun episode. Made me laugh.
at some point, he's like, oh, by the by, uh, I forgot to tell you, but the entourage people want you to play this uh, character. I told him to go pounce in. You're busy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And I'm like, he's not working for scale plus. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you tell me? He's not favored nation. He's a big star. <laughs> so go, I go, what? No. I, like, I'm gonna, uh, they got like Artie wow. Lang to do it or something. It's too late. I forgot to tell you. But anyway. Wow. And you then know, meanwhile, you got some sensitive guys over there at HBO like, oh, he turned us down. Now, uh, for All now. right. <laughs> I would have loved to. Oh, you would have been great to do that. Uh, character, but Artie's great. Although I was trying to, I was in New York uh, a few days back, and I was like, "Where's Artie Lang? Like, where is Artie? Is he sober, recovering, stepped back from comedy? Like, Artie is everyone's. You know, there were like, I never really thought about this, but there was kind of Norm McDonald, mm-hmm. and then there was the blue collar version of norm mcdonald which is Artie lang like yeah, everybody yep. agreed oh those are the two funniest guys it's always great you know doing podcasts with him mm-hmm. being up on stage at caroline's with Artie lang yep. just it's magic it's great yeah. it's and and then you know drugs and substance and problems and and blah 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 but then you blink your eyes and like four years goes by and you're like Where's, where is he? Where is where Artie yeah. Lang? And he's super funny. Yeah, no doubt. You're always rooting for him. Always yeah. rooting for him. He's focusing on his health, which, yeah, but you can do that and be funny. Four years. <laughs> yeah. He should be really healthy by now. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know where he ended up. I don't know like where he is. I mean, the last Adam pictures I've seen, he looks, he looks a lot better than. Oh really? He's yeah. jacked, man. He's been lifting the <laughs> lifting and, and, weights for and, four years straight. <laughs> and then who are all these people? Who I'm jealous of, by the way, who they just go, I'm just taking the whole summer off. I'm, I'm just taking a- Well, you must have I, stockpiled some I, cash I, I, to I'm be gonna, able to do that. I'm going to take three years <laughs> off and focus on me. Yeah. Like, what? I can't go fucking weekend without going somewhere This writer strike is forcing us to right. uh, take a- I, oh, Who knows right. how long this is going to go, but we might have some downtime. Here's going to be longer than the last one. I think so, too. Yeah. I think this whole AI thing is going to- be a really stumbling block. I don't know how you stop them from using it. And Yeah. Well, where do you, I mean, you're in the actor world. What's your, so everybody I talk to who, when the strike comes up, like um, I ran into Seth Myers and the streets of Manhattan the other day. Of course, you talk to Jimmy, you talk to any of these people and they're like, oh, this is going on for a long time. Yeah, that's like what I'm hearing. That's too. all yeah. the answer is don't. Every writer hold your I breath. talk to is like, we're not even close. It's not going to, this is going to be a while. Yeah. So, and I mean, they might even be able to figure out the streaming and all that, but it's this AI thing. It's just, I don't know how you stop, stop it from being used. Right. I mean, someone could use it and then claim they didn't anyway. I, I just. Right. Or, or like use it, use it and then. Punch it up, yeah, and then touch up this, yeah, then like rewrite my, with a real with real jokes. I don't think a computer's ever going to be able to no, but spit it's out like, funny jokes. Like I don't know, maybe my, they can. My uh, grandfather once in a while would bust out a TV dinner, and there's a metaphor <laughs> here. And he did the very underrated Mexican enchilada one. Now everyone's talking about turkey, and uh, you know. Hungry man, hungry baby. man. They're hungry talking man. about the fried South chicken, Paris steak. Paris steak. Paris oh, yeah. but, but don't sleep on the Mexican one. It was had the red uh, sauce, okay. the enchilada, and whatever. He would make the TV dinner. That's AI. Then he'd pull it out. But then he'd like dice up some tomatoes and cut up some onions. And oh he, yeah, he, you got to gussy he, it up. He'd yeah. Gussy it up. Yeah. And that's what you could do. You could go yeah. AI, write me a script of Entourage, and then they would do it. And then you'd get the script and you'd punch Add it up. Add the jokes. Yeah. Add the jokes. Yeah. Or fix the. I jokes. think they're gonna have to just lighten up on that whole thing. I don't think there's any way to really stop it. But I don't think it's ever gonna totally take over writing anyway. It might take over like that first draft maybe or. That middle draft, you know? Well, I think what it's going to do is everybody who's average or below average in any field has the possibility of being replaced. Like, if yeah. you flip burgers for a living, there'll be a robot that flips burgers faster and cheaper than yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. and you can be replaced. Yes. And and if you do certain types of mechanical stuff, certain types of building, certain types of whatever, but you're never really going to replace the master artist. You know no, what I mean? So, no. so the so Sasha Baron Cohen and Seth MacFarlane are not going to be replaced by no. AI. No. 
but a sort of middle of the road writer's room sort of veteran hack or veteran, you know, the middle road writer's room guy. That guy's got to be worried a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. You don't need as many writers, probably. They're that middle guy who who did that that middle draft. Yeah. The well, guy who laid low. I think just... I think what it was what what maybe uh, maybe it is as well is um we used to so the industry used to be really fat. Like you watched a man show and there's seven producers' names on there, and I never even saw one of those guys yeah. on the yeah, set. Yeah. You know what I mean? Guys with no show paychecks who they, they they might show up on tape day to eat and then they just leave. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like there are all these producers, and you know, back in the day when 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 John Stewart, you could probably find footage, Ben, John Stewart winning an Emmy for best you know variety whatever. John Stewart win the end the the, the Daily Show, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. At some point, he'd bring up all the writers. Nineteen guys came onto the yeah, stage. Like yeah. it wasn't four guys. It yeah. wasn't seven guys. It was. 20 guys for a daily half hour, one hour wow. show. Now, the early are- days of Entourage, you got to look at some of those, uh, the credits, the uh-huh. producer credits, because all Mark Wahlberg's boys, all <laughs> the guys who kind of played our characters, they all got producer credits. And of course, they didn't have anything to do with the show at all. Right. And, and, and the, yeah, so it was a lot of no show paychecks. Of, could kind of, the business could kind of absorb that, but it's a different time. And we can't have a bunch of managers who don't do anything and a bunch of producers who don't do anything getting paid. And I yep. don't know if well, – we'll, we'll see John Stewart up there. Oh, what yeah. year is that John Stewart? It's, it's 2015. A, it's a lot of writers. Right. Now – Thank you. Thank you. Oh my Without God. the music, That's it really feels very judgmental. I got to say. Everybody's staring going, it's been 10 seconds. Entertain us. Um, to everybody on television, I just want to tell you, cling to it as long as you can, like, like death, like, like, like uh, in the Titanic, the guy who was cling to it. I have been off of television right, for six Stop weeks, it seven. for a second. Like, <laughs> there are 17 people on stage. Now, <laughs> yeah. those are his writers. And this is a cable show. And what I'm saying is, is three of those guys you do need. The rest yeah. could be replaced by AI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's maybe where we're heading. That's the problem. Yes. Now, yes. The the hard part is there's 17 people on stage and it's hard for number 13 through number 17 at the bottom of the barrel to argue as to why they need to make six figures for the rest of their life. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's where this is going to kick in, I assume. Cuz things change and they get kind of leaner and meaner uh one of the guys is ll cool j i'm looking at a staff of writers going god he's got a guy who looks like ll cool j <laughs> on the staff that is ll seems uh un- an unlikely um let's see anyway um uh, so it's changing and and it's gonna affect you right because you're like an actor and you need well, material, yeah, I mean, right? hopefully they won't start replacing us with robots, but I think uh, acting is, I think we're safe on that front mm-hmm. for the most part. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, I do a podcast too, Victory the Podcast. I'm shamelessly wearing the Victory hat right now. Oh, looking at but it. Johnny yeah. Drama's this, catchphrase. Yeah. Yeah, Victory. We do this, uh, we, we do it, uh, they might do it with yours. Do you guys do it in like Spanish, in French? So they'll oh, take no. your voice and, and there's this company called Veritone. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they'll they'll do you in Chinese. They'll t- once they have your voice down, they could do your podcast in many languages. Oh, really? Which is another form of AI, right? It's kind of scary too when they can they like auto they can make you it. say anything yeah. they want to make you say, which is spooky. But, oh, uh, right. Yeah. You know, so we it's... signed off on it, and they're doing it in well, all many face... languages. So yeah, with all like the face swapping and all that stuff that, too. Like that with Tom Cruise was that was unbelievable. The Tom Cruise face swapping. Oh yeah, we AI had him. we had the guy who did that on this show. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that was crazy. It's, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're in a new world order. Everything's. Here's the deal. Um, we're all going to have to learn to care a little bit less. 
Yeah. That's just the problem. I, yeah. I, yeah, I talk to younger people. I really don't care. So. And they're just staring <laughs> at their phone going, so, so you see the shit on Reddit? It's like you, you just have to care less. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. of the luxuries. I don't have any feelings, so I'm, being I'm good. being old is not having feelings and not caring. <laughs> I feel pain. That's all I feel. That's right. I can see in Johnny's eyes. All right. We'll take a little break. And we'll come back. Kevin's going to hang out. Maybe we'll do some news. Sure. And we'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip. A uh, pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Taro. T U R O dot com. Let me tell you about Angie homeowners. You know it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts knowledge you need for your maintenance and repairs. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of the car. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. If your check engine light is on, O'Reilly Auto Parts will scan it and retrieve your trouble codes for free. If needed, they'll even refer you to a repair shop. When you're a do-it-yourselfer, and need a specialty tool to finish the job, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and ask about their loaner tool program. Simply pay a refundable deposit and borrow the right tool. Then get your deposit back when it's returned. Ready for some new wiper blades? The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you pick out just what you need for your car and will even install them for you for free. O'Reilly Auto Parts has thousands of quality parts and accessories in stock that you might need to keep your vehicle running at its best. Place your order online at O'Reilly Auto Parts and then pick it up at your local store. You can even have your order shipped directly to your doorstep, giving you the freedom of shopping on your schedule. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, a couple of years ago, I was in a doctorate level course. It was for education at a fairly well-known university. Part of something we had to do was go around the room and talk about how as women we had been oppressed. But it was a room of 12 women, a female professor, and one dude. Please make it make sense. I got laughed out of the room when I said I didn't feel oppressed. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah. Everyone ball up your fist and punch yourself in the face because that's essentially what we're doing, just talking everyone into feeling oppressed. Everyone who's alive in 2023 in the United States lives better than anyone who was born before you in any other country ever. No so fucking get over it and get to fucking work and shut up. Exactly. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Oh, women. <laughs> oppressed. <laughs> you live seven years longer than us. How oppressed yeah. can you be? You get a break on your car insurance. 
Oh. <laughs> and you're worried about living your best life. We're worried about providing the money so you can live your best life. No doubt. You're just worried about living your best life. No doubt. No. I, I'm going for fair to middling in the life department. I'm not worried about my best. That's not even <laughs> yeah. on the table. <laughs> yeah. God damn. People always would say to me, they'd go, oh, you work so hard. Like, when are you going to have enough money or whatever? I go, when I can live the life my wife and kids lead and dog, for that matter, <laughs> then then I will have enough money. But I don't yeah. have that enough money for that. I have enough yeah. so they can live that life, but not yeah. me. I got to go on the fucking road. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, no thoughts. No thoughts. All right. All right, so in Nashville, there's a <clears throat> grandfather who ate only McDonald's for 100 days straight. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And he went from 238 pounds to 179 pounds, so about so 58 he, pounds. He, he didn't get supersized. He went the other way. He went the other way. And How so, much did he? He went from two thirty eight to one 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 seventy nine. Mm hmm. Yeah. He went with a regular cheeseburger though. He didn't go with a quarter pounder or a Big Mac. Right. Well, so he 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 did he did fries and burgers, apple fritters. He didn't. But the thing is, he didn't do soda, and he didn't consume alcohol or or do snacks either during the hundred days. So he actually lost weight. And people well, he was he? missing the best meal, which is the uh, bi- the sausage egg and cheese McMuffin. Oh, it's the best. And the hash brown. I mean, yeah, come on. He, what, what was he doing? You got to eat the hash brown. Was he hooked up to a Pilates machine like the entire time, or was he just going about his his normal day? Uh, just, it just says went about his day. Just didn't. Uh, so the the reason he's uh, people are do, are studying him because he went on TikTok and now and now people are like, how did this happen? Because yeah, we, there's that super size movie where yeah. right. where I think it was Morgan Spurlock. He got yeah. he got super fat doing it. And so he's now making the rounds on like t- the Today Show and saying, yeah, he what he his secret to success was he would eat only half the provided food in each meal. That's him there. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, this okay. is an old story, right? We this we talked about this four months ago. This guy it was probably when he started. Made now he's rounds. out with the weight weight loss. Oh, there's something. He looks like he's holding his breath about oh, there. this. I don't know, it's story. Published, published about less than a week ago, so. Uh, yeah, that it's, I mean, it's people out. People have done this. People have Maybe tried Maybe another this. guy did it. I think the well, guy I, we're thinking of was a coach or something. But anyway, I like these challenges, but I'd go... I'd go in and out burger. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. you had to choose. Well, double I, double. That's so right. So I, I hit up our our fitness consultant Vinny about this story, mm-hmm. and he says that this is a complete hoax. Mm. Yeah, he says that uh, this is the McDonald's version of Jared from Subway. He mm. speaks a little too polished on these shows, mm. a little too well thought out, a little too well spoken. So he, he smells a rat. He's and, shilling for McDonald's. Yeah, that's what that's what Vinny mm. thinks. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I think that could be photoshopped as well. It looks kind of photoshopped. AI, Photoshop, it's all it's all there. <laughs> yeah. I uh God, I haven't had McDonald's in a in a million years. Oh, the breakfast is just so good. <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> oh, the, down with the only reason to go. Sausage. Really. The egg McMuffin. McMuffin. First off, I'll tell you what I do love. Sausage. You got to go sausage. You got to go sausage. Yeah. And not the Canadian bacon. And by the way, you take that hash brown, you stick it right in the middle. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You put he, it right in the middle of the sandwich, it and it's just... You go full turducken. Oh, yeah. Go right <laughs> in, man. I'll tell you what I'm a fucking sucker for. The griddle egg hoop. The formed oh, yeah. egg. I love the fact that yeah, they yeah, got yeah. an egg. You know, all you in folks that do the egg, like there, there are places you can go to Fat Burger or whatever and get an egg, but that's just a fried egg. That's just a sloppy perimeter fried egg. Free formed. Yeah. Free formed. They, they fried put it in egg. the hoop. Yeah. I like the hoop. I love the formed egg because it gives it thickness. The other plain fried egg, that just drifts off. Yeah. That's just that's just a song that will never end. Yeah. It's just, uh, and at some point you're eating egg white that's a sixteenth of an inch thick. Yeah. There's no good, That's yeah, an, and then it gets a little tough at the end. No doubt. You need the formed You need the hoop. hoop. We you need, need hoop. boundaries, people. That's yeah. what it is. It's an egg boundary. Yeah. 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 I got to get one of those hoops for myself. You need a home hoop? I need a home hoop. I need an you egg hoop. <laughs> You'll never be able to recreate it, though, but why? You know what I mean? I mean, I don't think that there's much to it, right? You get the muffin. You get well. The genius is the English muffin. Yeah, and then the 
I, you look, could do better with the muffin, I think. You know, you get some Thomas's. I think you could step up the muffin a little it bit. It may be too nooky and cranny. The sausage, I don't know if you could make better. They're, no. They're, they're, it's really good. And Let, you're not going to do better with the hash brown. I argue with people about this all the time. They like the link sausage better than the round, flat patty sausage. Not in a sandwich. Not in a sandwich. No, not and in a Sammy. link sausages, uncookable. You put nine yeah. of them in the pan, you forget about it, and the one side burns. Yeah. You and then you roll try to roll it, but it rolls over to the burnt side again. <laughs> yeah. The patty, easy to do. Round. I'll bet you when they design the egg form, the egg hoop, they probably took the sausage patty and they threw a, they threw like a protractor on it or something some guy yeah. really worked it out and went this egg hoop needs to be the exact circumference yeah. of the patty because that's the that's the key that's the brilliance and of it i don't even like american cheese but somehow it works in this environment yeah, no in this, doubt that's why i always say extra cheese on it you could ask for extra cheese it's better now you you get talk- two. American cheese is the only way to go in the situation. Yes. Even though it'd be my last choice if I was just sitting around eating cheese. Well, because the American whole- cheese is good for two things. A cheeseburger mm-hmm. and, a, and a grilled cheese. Actually, three things because you need it on yeah. that egg sandwich. Yeah, American cheese is an, an enhancer. You don't. It's not something you eat all by itself. But right. it yeah. Provolone yeah. stands alone. But mm. American, that's an enhancer. Yeah. Then Enha- the it's American- kind of a it's a, kind of a dying cheese too, you know. I mean, it's, it's really it's only the cheeseburger that's keeping it going nowadays. It the, really is. It's, people are eating less and less American cheese. Can I say this about the egg McMuffin or the sausage McMuffin? Yeah, and McDonald's in general. There's a certain amount of a synthetic vibe to it that is the reason we love it. There's, there's uh, American cheese doesn't really taste like good cheese. It's got a little syntho, fake <laughs> whatever. The Egg McMuffin, the one you make at home, it's like, you ever have any, anyone ever try to make like an Orange Julius at home? It's fine, but it's not synthesized. You need some of that like <laughs> orange real. dye number 14 or the Maybe corn syrup or something. It. Maybe. They're, the thing about the Egg McMuffin, it's a little synthesized. You could do it. Yeah. You could get good eggs and good, um, you know, good muffins and good, you could get good everything get and make it at home organic. and it wouldn't taste mm-hmm. as good because it's too good. It yeah. needs a little chemical vibe like, to like, it. Could you throw brie on a sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin? No. no. Too fancy. No. Too fancy. Yeah. Kind of sounds Bring good, though. I don't know. <laughs> now, so you I, go with the I love cheese. cheese. You go I love cheese. any cheese. Me too. Of course. Much, oh, man, I love cheese. All right, sorry. Well, I like cheese that, that smells like dog shit, but it just tastes delicious, oh. like a... A Limburger. You ever have mm. Limburger? Well, it smells like who, cheese, right? Who stepped in the, uh, you know. Am I allowed to curse on you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Limburger. So, I mean, it smells bad, but when you taste it, it's delicious. It's the yeah. weirdest thing. Yeah, I went to a mm-hmm. cheese shop, and she was explaining all the cheeses. Oh, if you look at the veins in this cheese, I'm like, I don't want veins, veins? in my cheese. Yeah. Cheese shouldn't have veins. No. <laughs> Man, I want a sausage McMuffin. Bad. Yeah. By the oh, way, I think I want that egg forming. Next time I come on the show, I'll bring you one. Do they use the egg forming hoop? I know you worked at McDonald's, but I remember seeing like a video of them. They just get a frozen cylinder of egg, and they just slice it into those into that shape. Oh, really? They yeah. don't crack an egg into that? No, they're, they're not, they're not making the egg to order. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. It's what? McDonald's. I got to tell but you. But you work there, so maybe they do it different. Maybe you know better than Did I do. Did you work there? Yeah. Awesome. I worked the griddle, so I know uh. I know my way around the searing and the flipping and the yeah. adding of the onions and made the Big Macs and made the wow. quarter pounders. And did I stood over that goddamn griddle? Yeah. In the valley, Johnny Drama. Oh, man, that must have been is. rough in the summer. It's, it's literally, <laughs> I hope you hydrated. <laughs> it's, a, it's a slab of steel that's an inch thick, three foot wide, and two foot deep, and you just stand over it. And it's the whole time. A thousand yeah. degrees. Oh, and my, my. That's the salt. It's, it's the sweat from my the manager. Yeah, yeah, that's my, what's so good about those burgers. My that's manager, the sweat. Ken, would always tell me to put the plastic smock on. But I'm already standing there where oh, that's great for the sweat. It really yeah. keeps the sweat. That thing in. really breathes. You're wearing the outfit in nineteen eighty when I oh, was there. Dude, you're killing is me. brown polyester. You were in a polyester gi. <laughs> I remember that. You were in polyester that slacks. <laughs> you want to talk about uncomfortable? Let's try to figure out let's really define discomfort. 
Yeah. The grill. You guys think standing in front of like one frying pan, you can heat up a little, like making bacon or something. This entire, this is three sewer crates, you know, manhole you covers, away just as red hot. Just <laughs> yeah. you're just standing. Your job is to lean over it for eight hours, right? In the most flammable clothing, <laughs> yeah. you have with they had so put put on the polyester polyester jacket polyester pants then they had a rule the rule was back in the day no rubber soled shoes hmm. they didn't want you wearing sneakers in their with their outfit like like they were fine wow. dining or something you know so they go look here's the deal you need leather soled shoes wow. leather soled shoes and i'm like I don't have. I work I, at I don't, McDonald's. I work at, I'm look. I'm applying for a job at McDonald's. I don't. I don't have a Bruno. No, I'm Molly. sure you're slipping all over right. the place on the grease with those oh, leather shoes. Oh my god! It's like so you could ski with those. I go to my closet. <laughs> I got nothing. I do have a pair of leather brown dress shoes, like from the fifties type. You know, lace up businessman fifties, hard as rock <laughs> with the leather. That I wore for my ninth grade graduation. So now my foot has grown two sizes since then. But it's the only shoe I have that's leather on the bottom. So I stuff my feet into these horrible leather dress shoes with a heel and everything. And I'm they're not broken in. I wore them once at graduation, standing there covered in polyester with the hat on leaning over the grill and i got fucking ken coming up there you go where's your smock corolla you put the smock on well you don't work the grill without the smock the smock was a huge piece of plastic that you tied around oh you God. i sweat on my brow dropping onto the thing how leaning long did over. this job last i don't i can't imagine you being there for too long but i was there about two months the only break I got from the grill was doing a sweep and a mop of the dining area, oh, which was brutal nice. because my friends would be coming home from the beach. You know, it was like the summer. <laughs> They'd be sitting there, and I'd be, like, pushing the mop oh. by them at 3 in Your the afternoon. toes have and, probably grown oh, to those. They're all bent oh, inwards. And- I, I was mopping with the mop in front of me. And sliding all over the wet floor <laughs> with my dress shoes, try using the mop as a cane to try to hold myself up, and curling. I, I forget. Oh, dude, that's too fun. My manager Ken was a huge black man with a big mustache, and at some point he just looked at me and he's like, "All right, Corolla, let's see you mop. Let's do a sweep and a mop. Let me watch you." And I was like, okay. I didn't know how to mop. I got the mop. And I was pushing the mop in front of me like I was playing hockey. You know, it was like a sort of. (laughs) But then the leather dress shoes that were not broken in, that were hard leather sole, would hit the wet floor and the feet were sliding. And I just remember Ken, he was looking at me like he was like standing with his arms crossed, just looking. He's a big dude. And he was like moving his mustache. Like, what the fuck is this white boy? What the fuck is he up is to? With this thing? He's, like, he's like, put the mop behind you. <laughs> don't walk in the mop floor. And I was like, I don't know what direction to mop in. And he would always yell at me to put that smock Dude, on. And I'd have to play. we got to make this a movie. This sounds like. Uh, I'd have to play dumb. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I can. I forgot to uh, go get the smock. Get the smock, but you But I was schmuck. so hot. I mean, the, look. The McDonald's has air conditioning, but when you're leaning over the griddle for six hours, you don't feel any of the air conditioning no, back there. You don't there. feel it in the kitchen. Right. Uh, we have them making the egg. The, oh, so they the, do make the egg. Till, uh, we don't, egg we don't know. We don't know. Well, Chris, to answer your question, yes, McDonald's uses only freshly cracked Canada grade A large eggs. In oh, there you go. Look at that. Oh, we crack so many wrong. eggs every single day that our crew members have become real experts at it. I got that. Fact, wow. What we the thought we would do today to show you That's a six, our freshly cracked six eggs hooper. is we're going to yeah. actually do Oh, look at that. You could do six in one you, shot. Chris. I mean, that's a McDonald's commercial. Then you could so. take that as a press and just press out your uh, your sausage. Oh, oh, man. You could use those hoops as your press. You'd put all the patties down. They had the freezer right next to the griddle, right? Uh. And Ken, <laughs> big Ken with his big catcher mid-sized hands, he could reach in 
and do seven patties per hand. <laughs> like he'd reach down, get seven patties and go boom, 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 wow. and slap the wow. button at the top. That was the timer. Wow. I'd reach down. Ken was like, see how many, see many patties you can do. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do five patties, Ken. Like, you can't handle five patties, son. Oh, dude, I've true. seen you mop. I'm like, <laughs> reach down, get like three patties. One would fall out and uh, bounce onto the floor. I've you know? seen you mop. <laughs> it's like he, he'd he go five. He'd go seven in each hand. <laughs> boom, boom, Palm boom, these boom. Patties. Hit oh, the button. Dude. The thing would go for like one minute. And then the searing light would go off, like nee 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 nee. And then you'd see, ksh, 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 ksh. hit the button again. A minute would go by the flip. Then the flip button would go off. The light would fire up. Nee 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 nee. You'd flip them, flip them over. <laughs> oh, Two dollars and forty five cents an hour. Every time you say Ken, I can only think of uh, hands of gold. I don't know if you remember that episode from Entourage, but. Ken was the masseuse. Oh in yeah, Vegas where I, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> I brought him uh, cashews, uh, California cashews. Right. And, I and I find he, he's like lying in my bed, like, ah, you know, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, Ken? <laughs> so I, every time you say Ken, it makes oh, me yeah, think flash, of that. Flashes back to the masseuse. Yeah. God, I want one. It was awesome. Yeah. So speaking of of uh, that guy going going on a diet, so there's this woman who went viral also last week on TikTok because there's an airport in New Zealand. That weighs their passengers. Good. Before, <laughs> that wow. weighs their passengers before going on, right? So she she freaked out. Like, why do you have to weigh me? Well, it turns out this is Air New Zealand, and they said they're they're, they're just doing this. It's uh, completely optional, and um, it's anonymous too. But they just take the weight just to for their own data to so even out the flight. Well, I mean, you just, don't want it all lopsided. You don't want all the weight on one side of well, the plane. Of course, that too. But they just they're just doing it to just collect data. They're only doing it for like a month or yeah. so just to see how how much their passengers are weighing and get, get an average there. But people are kind of freaking out about it and having to step on a scale before their flight. Oh, who gives a fuck? Everyone's so sensitive about their yeah. weight. You know, it's just like... like well, um, die, well, can I say this? <laughs> you we're, can't, we're living you can't in talk a, weight anymore. We're living in a time where fat is beautiful and all the ladies from Dove or Tubalards and coming in all different shapes, but they're all yeah. being celebrated and beautiful. Good fat ass, get on a scale then. Let us yeah. celebrate your fat <laughs> ass. Like, this thing is like, I don't want to be weighed. And we're gonna. And Lizzo should be celebrated as a beauty queen. Well, well, then which is it? Like, what, yeah. what are we uptight about? Yeah. Then if this is to be celebrated, yeah. And there's fatties and the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. Like, we're celebrating yeah. fat asses. Yeah. So get on the scale, fat ass. There were there. That was a carnival game where like a guy would guess your weight or your age, and then if you like. Got it. There was a trick to that. Yeah, there's there's a trick. I'm I sure. think you were there was a weight underneath the uh, boardwalk or something. I mm. don't know. I, there's a trick to that. Yeah, but there there's like a th- you can't do that now. My no, God. no. And but also, I think you could look at someone and get an idea of what they. That's yeah. the trick. What yeah. they yeah. what Just they see weigh. The physical. Yeah. Yeah. So this is good. You guys ever been on a flight where they're like, we're overweight on this flight? Uh, not a, I have been not on a, a flight where they go, uh, we need some some passengers to move to the other side of the plane to uh, even yeah, it out. Or that, one yeah. fat guy. Yeah. What, Frank, that, come here. <laughs> well, move yeah, that big guy. If you're the fat guy, you can just feel all the eyes on you. As, as well, as he's a, the reason we got to move to the other side of the plane. We need four guys to move because of that one guy. I've been on – now, these are like smaller, proppy, kind of commutery, whatever. But I've been on a flight where they're like, we are overweight – who wants a volunteer to leave their bag back at the airport? <laughs> oh. Yeah, right. And everyone's like, no one's uh, doing it. Uh, and then they're like, well, then we're going to open up the cargo hold and we're randomly pulling one off or two ooh. off or three off. But whatever. If, if Look, you can raise your hand and get a voucher or you can all sit there and we're just going to go play yeah. Sophie's Choice with your, with your fucking with wow. the luggage. Wow. And they just... They'll pull off like four bags, and you'll just be going, all right, there's like 50 people on the plane. What are, what are my odds? What are my <laughs> odds here? But we're going to find out when we get to where we're going that your bag ain't here. And they'll put on the next flight or whatever. But then you sit around and you think, so wait a minute. We are flying at the maximum weight this flight can be at minus a couple of pieces yeah, of Samsonite, scary. like some some fucking tube socks and sweatpants, <laughs> yeah. like I, I and a toothbrush. I don't feel great about yeah, no. being at the maximum amount we can fly, but that's how it works. No. Yeah, sorry. Maybe take the voucher. Yeah, maybe yeah. take the voucher and, and get off the flight yourself. Um, so 
there that Sixth Street Bridge in L.A. Oh, oh my God! So it, remember, there's all these stories when it when it first opened. Everyone's doing like the donuts and doing all the street racing on it. Um, yeah, all the parties. Yes, all for the social media stuff. Well, a 17 year old boy just died there last last weekend, saying he was a uh, sh- uh, climbing up the bridge, mm-hmm. and he was trying to share it on social media. Yeah, and then, and fell off. My favorite part about that bridge and about all the sort of government related like here's what we're here's what we're doing you know we're bullet, we're building a bullet train it's going to go from Sacramento right into San Francisco to get there in 9 minutes and whatever they always do the they do the artist's rendering yeah and the artist's rendering of that bridge <laughs> Shows a bunch of happy couples pushing strollers yeah. and yeah. blooming flowers. And a, it's utopia. And, and, oh, there's a mime over there and a guy <laughs> painting street, you know. And this guy's selling churros. The actual version of it, graffiti, gangbangers doing yeah. donuts and yeah. Dodge Chargers and 17-year-olds falling to their death. Like, that's what yeah. it is. But the, but the artist's rendering of it, it's utopian. It's yeah. beautifully lit, safe. Couples strolling together arm in arm. Yeah. And then yeah. that. Because the thing about what I've realized about like LA is we can no longer have nice things. It, they will be ruined. We we cannot have a nice bridge. It will be tagged. Yeah. Somebody'll jump off it. Somebody'll do donuts in their Dodge Charger. Like we can't have nice things anymore. Everything's got to be shit in LA because mm-hmm. everyone's just a fucking animal in LA. And then <laughs> people all this they do all this stuff they go like, well, in in Amsterdam they have public bathrooms. I'm like that's Amsterdam. They have normal people there. We're a bunch there. of animals. We're a bunch here. of fucking yeah. <laughs> animals that broke out of prison. We don't know how to have nice things yeah. here. But believe me, well, whatever your European utopia in Luxembourg, they have housing that's subsidized by the government and people live. Yeah. That's Let me nice. take some of the people that graffiti the fucking bridge 10 minutes after the concrete's dry. <laughs> I'll move them to Luxembourg yeah. and let them hang out in your utopia for 20 minutes and then tell me how great the plan is, douche. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the fact yeah. that you have them. It's it's your people are better than ours. <laughs> Look, everything would work. I, everything could be... On the honor system, I, I could open a 24-hour liquor store that just had all the beer and wine and all the Skittles yeah, you wanted. And then check out. You, I don't need anyone to man it. You just tuck the money in. If you buy yourself a six-pack of St. Polly Girl, that'll be twelve ninety nine. Just put the, put the money into the kitty. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's 10 seconds. That's like, you know, you know what L.A. is? I'll tell you what L.A. is and who L.A. is comprised of. L.A. There's two things. Half the people in L.A. are idealistic douchebags who think everyone's going to do the right thing. Like, oh, so we'll have a shelter for the homeless people. And Mm -hmm. they can use, they can inject themselves safely in a safe zone to inject their uh, narcotics. You know, like, and everything's going to (laughs) work. They're shitting in the street and stabbing each other with rebar. Like, that's, we don't (laughs) have, we have half the people live in Beverly Hills and Malibu, and they set policy for the animals that they don't think are going to act like animals. Like, oh, we'll just have a system. We'll take care. We'll give every every student at LA Unified is going to get a tablet. We'll mm-hmm. give them a tablet, and then they can catch up with reading and math scores, or they can hack it and watch porn all fucking day. <laughs> like that. We have a bunch of ideologues who think people are going to act like human beings. They won't. Here's what we. Here's what LA is. Remember when you're a kid and you go trick or treating and There'd be that one house where the people weren't home, but they'd leave the pumpkin, the plastic pumpkin oh, yeah, outside yeah. with all the candy in it. Take and one, like, please. please. Yeah, a little sign there. Just take one. Yeah, Just right. Just take one. And you <laughs> I'm want- dumping this whole thing into <laughs> my right. now, pillowcase. <laughs> you, there'd be a group of like four or five people, and you'd walk up. Three of them would take one, but the last guy takes the whole pumpkin, he dumps that it into his me. pillowcase, he me. takes the fucking pumpkin, he shits in it, yeah. and <laughs> he throws it. I in don't a, think I ever shat in one. Shit I love the word you shat. Shat in a yeah. pumpkin. <laughs> they want my friends dump the thing, shit in the pumpkin, <laughs> throw it at the garden window on the way out. Oh, All right, man. LA's 
only comprise of people who shit in pumpkins. <laughs> so we can't have nice things. The people in Luxembourg take one piece of candy and leave. It'll work in Luxembourg. It can't work here because we have a bunch of pumpkin shitters. <laughs> pumpkin shitters. It's true. These oh, rules work well, nicely. Trick, trick or right. treat. So you've been tricked. The one candy it. people, all this stuff works on. The pumpkin shitters, it does not. That's what L.A. is. You're supposed to and shit in the pumpkins that don't give the treats, though. Right. right? Not not the ones that give you the take treats. take all the treats and then, yeah. A yeah group, like, oh, you're not going to answer your door? Okay. <laughs> the, and then a group of politicians and sort of, you know, well-heeled elite people who don't understand we live in, in it with an army of pumpkin shitters who are never going to do what you think they're going to do. They're shitting oh, in that plastic pumpkin. That's yeah. it. Now, if you would like to set policy based on my pumpkin shitter premise, then we could do shit that worked. Mm -hmm. But you're, oh, we're going to defund the police and put, we'll put community ambassadors. We don't like the look of armed police officers on the subway in L.A. So what we're going to have is subway ambassadors. These are men and women who aren't armed, who are going, good. You know who's in the subway? Pumpkin shitters. What happens when the fucking machete comes out to your fucking ambassador? Yeah. Now, you in Malibu who come up with the ambassador idea, you don't ride the subway and yeah. you think this is going to work. But you're living in a town that's lousy with pumpkin shitters. Yes. Yes, no doubt. And that's why I need your vote. So is this bridge ruined? Like... Eventually, what we do with this shit is we just put we'll we'll just put up like cement barriers and just yeah. go fuck it. There's two hundred million dollars in, nice in the garbage, mm -hmm. but we live in a. You put that bridge in Luxembourg, it'd be used right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you dropped it in the middle of pumpkin shitting central, <laughs> and that's what you got. Oh man! Find the. <clears throat> find the rendition of that bridge. It makes me laugh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. look at them. It's it a sure utopia. does look nice. It's beautiful. There's no gangbangers doing donuts anywhere. Happy couples, That's happy right. families. Yeah. That's right. No have crime, a real day. no nothing. Yeah. 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 Good place to get Green rolled. Plans. I yeah. have no... <laughs> the, you can't... It, it's, like, it's like you ever have that super shitty roommate you just can't have nice things with that person like there's just certain people certain people you could buy them a brand new top of the line lexus and get back with them in four months and just be trashed like that's yeah. that's who they are there was a house yeah. where we would we would jam at and then if you left your instrument there because like oh we'll be back next week and you can just leave your guitar your amps there strings are every busted. time you come back the next week yeah some like yeah strings are busted the amps chunk not is working taken out of the yeah it's like what happened was well, gone <laughs> We need an actual picture of this bridge and what it what it really looks like. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Pumpkin shitter. I don't think I've ever seen that bridge. It's new. I mean, it just opened like a year ago. But yeah, it opened a year ago, and the, originally the there was takeovers. a bunch of street takeovers. Yeah, I feel like I saw that art there. the the two the two the hands the two hands is. Is that there or is that? Uh, here's the whole thing with the takeovers. Oh, <laughs> on, here it is on, now. On okay. Everything. All, All right. right. Whole line of pumpkin shitters taking over the bridge. Getting right. ready for a car race or something. Here's the whole thing. Cops no longer can randomly shoot people for no good reason, but you need to randomly shoot someone for no good reason in order to keep the whole takeover thing over. Yeah. Well, and that is... But guys are doing donuts in front of cops now. They're just like, what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah. I'll yeah. sue your ass. You do anything about this. And that's this pumpkin shitting central. Well, people figured out that, yeah, we have bigger numbers than the cops that are in front of us. So we can do mm -hmm. whatever the hell we want. Yeah. Well, not only that, what's, what's the cop going to do? Grab the person who is of another ethnicity than him oh, and yeah. like hold him in a chokehold while oh, everyone no. films yeah. it. I hope you're And every on. fucking politician will side with the person that was doing yeah. donuts, not the cop yeah. and you're fucked. So they're like, fuck, go ahead. Pumpkins. <laughs> go, ahead, pumpkin. <laughs> go ahead. PSers. A couple nice cars on that bridge though. You PSers couple old nice shit Ford all you there, want. All nice Chevy 57 Chevy. Yeah. The Jews love their vintage cars. <laughs> <laughs> all right. One more. All right. So, um, Bill Cosby, he faces some new lawsuits now. Cause, um, 
California has expanded the window for sexual abuse accusers to take action. Mm. So this woman, Victoria Valentino, she's 80, former Playboy model. Mm. She's a, Victoria she, Valentino? Wow. Hot name. Yeah, that's a hot name. VV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's 80. She's 80. So she says back in 69, her and her friend went out with Cosby. Um, she, well, first off, she met Cosby initially during an audition, and uh, her six-year-old son had died right right before that. So she's mm. crying, and then she runs into Cosby again, who catches her crying. It's like, hey, let me take you out to dinner, and let me cheer you up. Her friend's there. They go out to dinner, and while they're at dinner, they, they all take some pills, and she thinks that Cosby fake took his pill and then mm-hmm. gave them another pill, and then... And then, mm. and then she's like, now it's all fuzzy. We're mm. going, we're in his car. He mm. takes us to his place. Mm. And then the next thing I know, I wake up and he's over my friend, like, um, who's also drugged out, obviously, and uh, and just doing stuff with her. And then he comes to me. He orally rapes me vaginally and, and has sex with me. And then, um, yeah, and she's been trying to accuse him of this because of statute of limitations. She hasn't been able to. But now that we've expanded it, Cosby is once again <clears throat> under the gun. <laughs> Well, in his situation, it's probably okay to uh, go back that far, but right. I don't know if it's a it's a good precedence to set that people can go back Cosby. that far in so many. Can you imagine every like, time come with Cosby, you would go, "All right, yeah, well, maybe <laughs> with this guy." Imagine every time Cosby's phone rings, he's just got to stare at it. And he's go, like, "Oh the no, fuck? You're gonna Here comes another one." <laughs> uh, um, and then, you know, it always starts with the weird innocuous thing. Like it's a guy, it's a lawyer or something. Uh, Bill, how are you doing? Good. Uh, I don't know yeah, how to tell you this, yeah. but. <laughs> it's, uh, is the wife around or are you you're alone? <laughs> like whenever you somebody asks. sit down. Did you check when, Twitter yet? Whenever one a- anyone asks you if there's anyone else in the room when yeah. you're talking on the phone, yeah. whatever comes after that's you're bad. Like, not good. Oh, no. That's it's bad. Not good. <laughs> yeah. What's her, what's the fucking wife's name? Shit. S- Camilla? Camilla. Camilla. Ah. Yeah, so if anyone ever calls, I'd like to call, I'd like to get Bill Cosby's personal number just to call him, just so I could, like twice a week, <laughs> I'd just call him and go, hey, Bill, is, uh, is Camilla around? She in the room? <laughs> no? Yeah. Oh, she's at the mall? Okay, good. He's like, oh, fuck Jesus. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? And then there's some small talk after that, which is weird, because now you yeah, want yeah. him to get yeah, to. Yeah. What How you, you doing? Know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he, that was his thing. His thing that was, was thing. Yeah. his thing was quaaludes. I don't know why that oh, was, was that his the thing. drug. He, yeah, he wasn't ro- roofing him. It was quaaludes. It was yeah. probably quaaludes back yeah. in the day. Well, they were great back in the day. Oh, I mean, my I God, mean, you remember those? Oh, days. I remember those. Yeah, they. Uh, I'm in seven fourteen. Seven fourteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the number on the pill. Yeah, yeah. He just said, "Take this pill, and it'll quote make you feel better." I gotta tell well, you, you know, if you stayed awake during it. They were fun, but yeah. they could knock you right out instantly. If you're <laughs> the best advertisement for a quaalude ever, it's like I remember being like 14, going like, "Whoa, what's a quaalude like?" And they're like, "It's like a six pack and a pill." And I was like, "Oh, that sounds awesome! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the best advertising for a pill ever. It's a six pack pill." Yeah. It's more like, like a 12 pack, though, man. <laughs> did you take one back in the day? I did. Yeah, and it yeah. knock you out. Yeah, I would just I'd just be floating around town. Like. I don't I don't even know what they were for legitimately. It was Yeah, I guess for sleep maybe, but or, or. They don't make them anymore or maybe you can get them in Mexico or something. I don't know. Yeah. I've never seen them. But quaaludes were a thing. It was obviously Cosby's like weapon of choice, allegedly, and that's what he did. But he didn't have to because he was Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was a huge star, yeah, you know, and was since the '60s. So it just goes to show that these guys' things are their things. They're not right. using it to get laid. It's part of the fetish. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. their pattern. So um, you're gonna love his uh, spokesperson, Andrew Wyatt. Oh, so, Andrew you're calls. Love this guy. Is Camille around, Bill? No. Okay. Why don't you just have a seat? Let me talk for a minute. Yeah. So he's, he's of course, Cosby's, Cosby's denying all of this, and his spokesperson, this is his quote. 
What graveyard can Mr. Cosby visit in order to dig up potential witnesses to testify on his behalf? Wow. America is continuing to see that this is a formula to make sure that no more black men in America accumulate oh, the American uh, dream that was secured by Mr. Cosby. Playing the race card. Playing the race card. And oh. um, yeah, so uh Victoria is now even more upset. Like, why are you playing the race card? She's actually commenting on that too. She's right. like, Yeah, of course this has nothing to do with race, but playing yeah. the race card. And but there is a point about going back that far in history. There are you know, yeah. A lot of the people that of may have been there are dead now. So, I mean, it gets where and, – and memory's a little fuzzy at this stage. And Yeah. Is that really the way it went down? I don't know. It gets a little – Yeah. But in his case, I'm sure What it happened, year would know. she have been a playmate then? In like the 60s or something? I yeah. had them all memorized like through the 70s. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was a thing. Now there's yeah, you're too many. covered in – Posters. No, I had your brother's. I had your brother's poster. Oh, right. that's weird. Uh, right over the bed. Oh, oh there she is. There Sep- she is. Sixty-three, huh? Miss September. Do we 63. have three? So this is. Yeah. We got a clip from Buddy Games, by the way. Six years later, it happened that I was uh, one of uh, the. Play. You know what? Uh, Josh sent me a clip today. I'm not in it, but he's like, "Hey, post this up on your Instagram." Josh Dumel. And uh, you guys downloaded because I was trying to figure out how to get it on my Instagram. <laughs> oh, this is it right here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's a great guy, man. He's a great I love guy. that guy. Yeah. Due mm-hmm. to recent events in our world today, we at Buddy Game Spring Awakening felt like it was time for men like myself to evolve, to catch up with the times. Would you stop saying that word? Nick Schwartz. You can't say that word oh, anymore. Nick I know. Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it. I was born in 1976. We went so far as to seek the help of those far more enlightened than us to recalibrate our old ways of thinking. Some of us were receptive. What is wrong with this image? Bob, you got this. What? That's clearly a man trying to play in the women's league, so that's wrong. It's unfair for the other team. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Oh, oh. You don't cancel me. I cancel you. Oh, again. <laughs> And <laughs> some of us might need a little extra work, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Buddy Games, Spring Awakening. It's not for everyone, but it's probably for you. <laughs> oh, oh, this movie is fun, man. It's really, that. really good. We kind of poke fun at the woke, you know, in a, in a kind of playful way, but yeah. the whole woke thing. And uh, It's available on uh, digital and VOD. All right, Kevin Dillon, always uh, love you coming by. Yes. Oh, man, it's been fun. It's uh, been fun. Victory, yeah, the podcast. Funny. Listen yeah. to that as well. Am I yeah. missing anything else? Uh, I got a couple other things. I got a Reagan movie coming out. Oh, really? With Dennis Quaid, who plays Reagan. Oh, sure. I, I play Jack Warner from Warner Brothers. They put me in a bald cap, and it's Oh, yeah, it's I know really the guys cool. who so made that movie. It's, it's his whole lifespan. Yeah, and uh, so they're aging. They're doing a lot of AI stuff in there, uh-huh. aging them up and aging them down, older and younger. Tell and, your uh, tell your brother to come on the show. I will. I'll, yeah, he'll keep come a on. Little love on. Yeah, on he'll him. come on. He's he's got a great sense of humor. Yeah. Oh, I also got another one called American Metal, but I believe they just changed the name, and I don't even know what it's called now. But with Travolta, should be pretty good too. Oh, we just oh, know. I just came like, in the show. American, it's Travolta. something about yeah. Gangland or so. I don't know. I thought American Metal was a good title. That's a cool but, title, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Nashville City Winery. That'll be uh, this Friday. Be there with Tommy Howell. You can say uh, say hi. Going going over some old stories. Yeah. Uh, Huntsville, Alabama, Las Vegas. Just go to amcrow.com for all the live shows because they'll be live everywhere. Greg Warren, the salesman, really funny stand-up special you should check out. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Kevin Dillon, Greg Warren, and Chris Max Pat saying mahalo. Mahalo.